What's going on everyone? Today I'll be going through my round 11 AFL tips as well as going through round 10, seeing when tips I got correct and review my big calls. So of course, let's start off with round 10. And we did all right actually. Well, I, I got seven out of nine, which I feel like it probably looks better on paper than what uh, the actual score suggests because it was a pretty easy round to tip. I feel like over 50% of all the tips that everyone actually put in the app were all identical. And uh, I'll go through mine. They were pretty similar to pretty much everyone else's tips. So the first game I tipped Carlton to beat Sydney in probably the most difficult game of the round to tip. I was only two points off, so pretty solid for my likings. I got Geelong to beat the Power pretty comfortably. The Dogs to get this over the Suns in a relatively close contest. Melbourne took control of North, although I actually forgot to tip North Melbourne. I was meant to tip it for my big call. But I'm just going to let, let it be for now because the amount of times I forgot to tip a game beforehand, like this is just getting one tip back. So in hindsight, I probably should have tipped North Melbourne, but let's just let's just keep the Melbourne tip. I don't think it should matter too much. I got St. Kilda's tip right over the Crows. Richmond to beat the Bombers. Giants to beat West Coast. Everyone was on track at this stage to get 9-8-9. We were all just like, oh, we need Brisbane and Freya to win and we've all got 9-8-9. But unfortunately, the... Uh, Footy gods weren't on our sides. The Lions weren't able to get the job done against the Hawks in a shootout. And Fremantle, again, very disappointing, especially the wet weather footy, wasn't able to get the job done against Collingwood. So 7 out of 9, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, pretty good. Like, when you think about it, if, I, if someone told me you'd get 7 out of 9 for the round, I'll take it. But I just feel like it was quite similar to last round where... All the favourites got done, and the ones I got wrong were the upsets. And then we'll go through the big calls. The first game that I got correct was between Melbourne and North. Larky and Zerha would combine for 50% or more of North Melbourne's goals, and they kicked four of the eight North goals in the game. So that's one correct. The second game was between St Kilda and Adelaide, which I got correct. And what a, I, I got the big call spot on. I tipped the Saints to win to buy around 20 points. And then I said that Max King would kick five more goals, and he did just that. Kick six straight, had one of his best games of his career up to date. And then, I only did one more big call to get correct, and it happened in the last game of the round between the Pies and the Dockers. I said that there'd be nine or less goals combined in the first half. I actually didn't even know it was wet weather footy, so that helped out my cause significantly. And it happened. So three big calls correct. I avoid the punishments for this week. Suck absolute S-H-I-T to those who got the uh, most likes for the round. So let's get right into round 11 for the AFL tips. And the first game, we have a pretty interesting contest between Sydney and Richmond at the SCG. I think the last time these two sides faced off at the SCG was way back in 2016, where the Swans absolutely annihilated the Tigers by over 100 points. Sydney aren't really in the best of form. They've only won one game from their last four outings, whilst the Tigers, on the other hand, they have found their form at the moment, and they have won their last four games of footy. I know they haven't been playing the best sides, but still, every win that the Tigers are getting is just building a little bit more confidence. They get getting plays back, such as Prestia and Martin, and they're just finding something at the moment, the Tigers. They're almost back to their best. Uh, it's the best the Tigers have been performing for, I'd say, a year and a half since their flag in 2020. They are out with Tom Lynch, which is a bit of an issue, and I'm pretty sure the Swans, they're without Josh Kennedy for a good 10 to 12 weeks. But I have a feeling, particularly at the SCG, the Sydney Swans need to get this win. Otherwise, top eight is in jeopardy. They're one game outside the top eight, and... Uh, they just need to find some form back for the confidence. So I think the Swans should win this game, although the Tigers, you can't write them off. They're looking like a side that can put some damage come the, the pointy end of the season. But I think I've got to go the Swans here because I just expect them to bounce back. And the Tigers haven't beaten anyone good yet so far this season. But I think this will be a very close game. Don't get me wrong. I'll go the Swans to win this one by 14 points. And my big call, Lance Franklin kicks three or more goals before half time. So the next game, we've got Brisbane taking on GWS at the Gabba. First game on the Saturday. The Lions went down to the Hawks, but no, I don't think it's too much of a worry for the Lions. They just can't seem to play the Hawks at all, particularly in Tassie. Their last three games, I think now it is, that they've played against Hawthorne. They've all been losses. So it's their bogey team, Brisbane. I don't know why, because Hawthorne haven't really been going that great in the last couple of seasons. Uh, but yeah, Brisbane, I mean, they didn't play terrible. They still scored 112, but they allowed the Hawks to score too much, and particularly through free kicks. That game, let, let's be real though, there were way too many free kicks awarded in that game. It was just good to watch a close high scoring game. They lost 112 to 117, but I don't think there are too many worries to take out of that game. Other than the humid cluggage injury, that is going to be a bit of a setback for the Lions. The Giants got a win under the interim coach in his first game in Mark McVeigh. 
Uh, the Giants, I feel like they played with a lot more freedom, a few positional changes. Uh, Himmelberg went down back. Cornelia played some more time in the midfield, really had a good game. And, uh, you know, the Giants, yeah, they, they kicked 21 goals, 14 at half time. They, they were really good. I know it was against the West Coast Eagles, and literally anyone can kick a big score against the Eagles, but they just had to show it, and they did in this game. But the Lions are very, very different from the West Coast Eagles, particularly at home. But I feel like the Giants right now, they're, they're playing with a bit of spirit under Mark McVay, and I reckon they'll put up a bit of a fight. Uh, but I've got to go to the Lions in this one. I'm going to go them with 28 points. And my big call will actually be that the Giants win two or more quarters. Now, the second game at the same time is between Geelong and Adelaide at GMHBA Stadium. The Cats got a pretty good 34-point win against Port. They were sort of challenged in the first half. It was a really poor game to watch the... Uh, you know, just the skill quality in the first half particularly. But the Cats, they played the game how they wanted to in the second half, and they sort of controlled the game from that point. Um, kicked seven of the last eight goals, I think they did. Jeremy Cameron had a really good game. Three goals, 24 touches. Too good for the power in this one. And Adelaide, I thought they were quite impressive against the Saints. They really took it up to us. Of course, bad kicking sort of cost them in that one. Nine goals, 15 umpiring did lean towards the Crows. That did help them out at the end of the day. But like at the end of the day, though, the Saints were just too good, particularly in that last term, kicking eight goals to three. Um, but they weren't too bad against the Saints. I think the Cats, though, at GMHBA, they should put a number on the Crows. I think the Crows could be competitive for one or two quarters, but I think the Cats get a bit of a percentage booster in this one. I'm going to go the Cats to win it by 50 points. And um, a big call for this game will be that Sam DeConning finally wins a Rising Star nomination for the round. I mean, if you've been watching Geelong play in the last three or four weeks, he really deserves a Rising Star nomination. He's been really good. So the next game, we have Melbourne taking on the Dockers at the MCG. If it wasn't for Frio's sort of form slump, I feel like this game could have been a lot more of an enthralling contest than what it is. However, it still might be a good contest just because the Dockers have sort of fallen in terms of their form with a couple of losses in a Road. Doesn't mean this game can't be a belter. Of course, the D's, or as we should, as or as they're called at the moment, Nam got a good win against North. They were they were challenged for the first three quarters. I got to give my hats off to the Roos. At one stage, they were within eight points of the D's in that third quarter. But you know, eventually, it, it, it sort of the floodgates eventually opened for the D's, and they they piled on the goals in that last quarter. It was always going to happen. It just happened later than what most of us predicted. And of course, I got my multi wrong. Not surprising at all. Freeman, on the other hand, they take a hit on their percentage. They lost to Collingwood at home in a game that many of us thought that you surely they bounce back. The conditions, again, they just sort of affected Fremantle's style of play. They weren't able to get anything going up forward. Again, the pies were really good in all aspects of the ground. And Freo are now in a bit of a vulnerable position. Of course, their percentage takes a bit of a hit. And they play Melbourne and then Brisbane in the next two games, which you probably reckon that they might lose them both. So... Not very good for the Dockers, but I feel like they're still a good enough side to bounce back. And you never know, they could even beat the Dockers because these two sides are still probably the best two sides in the comp defensively. Uh, but my my tip will have to go the, the Ds. There's no reason not to tip them. We're going to go the Ds by 24 points. A big call, 28 or more behinds are combined throughout the entirety of the game. So we head to the Saturday night games. The first one of the two being between the Eagles and the Dogs at Optus Stadium. Uh, do I... Do I, have to, do I respect the Eagles' efforts on the weekend? Even though they conceded 14 goals in the first half, they were able to score, I think, 87 of their own, which is up there with their, one of their highest scores of the season. So you've got to give props for the Eagles in that regard. But at the end of the day, they still lost by 52 against the side that uh, is in the bottom five. So I just feel like it highlights West Coast season in a nutshell. And they're up against a Dogs who are in red-hot form, winning their last two games against Collingwood and the Gold Coast Suns. And I cannot see a day where the Eagles even come close in this one. The Bulldogs, they're fine in their form back. They're a side who can smash teams if they want to. They did it against the Saints last year and the Roos. They're going to do it again against the Eagles. I reckon this will be a big win from the Dogs. 83 points will be my prediction. And um, a big call will be that the Dogs will be up by 10 or more goals at half time. Now, the second of the two Saturday night games, the one I'm more looking forward to in terms of being a contest, is between Gold Coast and Hawthorne at Teo Stadium up in Darwin. The Suns were actually all right against the Dogs. Like, they never gave up. They kept on trying. They kept on fighting with the Dogs. But at the end of the day, the Dogs were just a little bit too classy, a little bit too good up in Mars. But I didn't think the Suns were that bad at all. Joel Jeffrey impressed a lot of us with five goals and a rising star nomination. Hawthorne, on the other hand, they had a really good win against the Lions. They 
Well, their last win before that was against the Cats on Easter Monday. So finally, they got a bit of reward for their good effort because I don't think the Hawks have been too bad at all this season. You know, they're playing really fast attacking footy under Sam Mitchell, but not everything has gone their way. Finally, they were able to run out a game of footy because uh, the Lions were up by like 22 points in the third quarter. I just thought, yeah, that, the Lions are going to take this game away. But no, Hawthorne held strong, responded, won the game. Shout out to Jai Newcomb. And Mitch Lewis, they played really good games, as well as Tom Mitchell. I, I seem to just never tip the Hawks whenever I do my tipping. And Hawks fans aren't going to like me here, but I'm going to go the Suns. I just feel like the Suns, slightly more trustworthy as of late. The Hawks are a very hot and cold side. Um, but I think this will be one of the games of the round. I'm going to go the Suns to win this one by 17 points. But my big call will be that there'll be 10 or more lead changes throughout the game. We head to the Sunday games, and the first of the lot is between the Saints and North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Hopefully, for our sake, the Saints, it's a percentage booster. No disrespect to North, but they're sitting 17th with a percentage of 53% and pretty much losing every game by over eight goals so far this season. We had a good win against the Crows. We weren't at our best in the first three quarters. If anything, we probably deserve to lose. But that last quarter, you know goes to show that we are a fit side. We are a fast finishing side. Kicked eight goals to three in that quarter. North Melbourne, I thought they were all right. I know the Ds had a lot more scoring shots, a lot more inside 50s in the first three quarters. Just weren't able to punish the Roos as of yet. But I thought North Melbourne were actually pretty good. They showed their effort and they, they showed that they can compete and improve even through losing games of footy. But the result for this game should be a no-brainer. The Saints... It is a must-win game and it's a must-win percentage booster because our percentage is the second lowest for all the teams in the top eight. So a big win would be nice for us. And I've gone at the Saints to win this one by 65 points. My big call, the Saints have four or more players who score three or more goals in this game. The next game, 3.20 p.m. at the MCG, arguably game of the round. Collingwood v. Carlton, the classic rivalry. The Blues are flying at the moment. They're eight and two. They had a really good win against the Swans. Probably their best win so far of the season. And it all, all all came about due to the second quarter where they kicked, I think, nine goals. And that was pretty much at the end. And at the end of the day, that just proved to be too much for the Swans. Although, at, the Swans almost could have won that game late. They just weren't able to make the most of their inside 50s. Jacob Wiedering, shout out to him. He was absolutely outstanding. And, uh, of course, Charlie Kerner with the six goals. And then Collingwood, they were also really good against Frio. Not many gave him a chance, particularly away. And uh, they, they just played really good footy. They played the wet conditions a lot better than the Dockers. And, uh, yeah, got the job done by six goals. Really surprising. Oh, I feel like it builds up to be... It shapes up to be a really, really good game. Collingwood are going to have all the confidence in the world that they can beat Cullen. Particularly considering that as of late, Collingwood just seemed to win it all the time against Cullen. I know it's a different scenario at the moment. The Blues are a lot better than the Pies and really should win this game to go 9-2. But... Where, no matter where these two sides are on the ladder, it always is generally a good game of footy. I'm, I'm going to go for an upset here. I, I feel like upsets are going to happen. This one, I can see happening. I, I can see Collingwood excel in this game and play their best game of footy they have played all year and uh, get the job done. But I don't see the Blues themselves not showing up. I think both sides will show up, but the, the Pies just take more of their chances and win the game by three points in what is safe to be game of the round and Probably almost game of the, the year as of at this stage of the season. Uh, so I go P Collingwood by three points. Big call. The Pies win the game after trailing at three quarter time. And the last game of the round, we have Port Adelaide take on Essendon in the graveyard shift. I wouldn't assume there'd be too many eyes pointing towards this game. It just feels like a bit of a dead rubber, honestly. Port were quite poor against the Cats at half time. They were in the game, in the contest. You know, anyone's game at half time, but then that. Second half, the Cats were just too good, and they sort of gave up in a way, I feel like. Essendon, they, they were better. They, they showed signs, a lot more signs than they did against the Swans. Of course, they definitely showed more intent and uh, more effort. But how much of that was amplified due to the backlash they received the week before during the media, where they were just labelled as a weak, soft footy side. Too nice of a club. Better effort. But at the end of the day, the Tigers are a much better side at the moment. And uh, yeah, the, the Bombers weren't able to get the job done. They lost that by 33. I think this one's a pretty obvious tip. The Power just need to win games now. They, that loss has put, pushed them back to 11th. And they're now two games outside the eight. So pretty much every game now is a bit of a mini final for the Power. If they do want to make the finals, must win game of footy. And I see them winning this one pretty easily. I'm going to go the Power to win it by 33 points. My big call will be that the Bombers go goalless at quarter time. So those were my round 11 tips for the 2022 AFL season. I'll go through them real quick. I went the Swans, the Lions, the Cats, the Ds, 
the dogs, the sons, the saints, the pies, and of course, the power. So those are my tips. Let me know what you thought of them down below in the comments. And uh, I'd like to see an upset of the week. So what is your upset of the week? If you're going to go an upset of the week, even if you haven't predicted an upset, comment down below your upset of the week and give me a bit of a reasoning because I'd like to see what you guys have to say. But those are my tips, of course. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go do that right now. We are on the road to 20K. So if you're watching the content and enjoy it but haven't subscribed, go chuck a sub. Go watch my Adelaide v Saints vlog for whatever reason. I think it's because of the time where I uploaded it. It just hasn't really done as well as I wanted it to do. So go and watch that if you haven't already. Really, really recommend it. Uh, but aside from that, I appreciate everyone for watching. Drop a comment for a punishment in the comments. And I'll see you soon in my next one.